so hello friends now in this video we are going to start with bioavailability in our previous video as you know you have watched uh, we have discussed till root of drug administration so let's discuss about the bioavailability so first we will define this so what is the basic definition of this so a fraction of drug that comes into systemic circulation with time is basically bioavailability clear it is also known as rate of absorption clear Okay. We, uh, I have given you idea about the biology okay, in my previous video. So, biology, if the drug is given through IV route, then it is 100%. Okay, 100% biology is seen when the drug is given through IV route and it is taken as a standard. Okay, and all other routes except IV have biology less than 100%. Clear? And we uh, calculate the biology of other routes in compared to IV route. Okay, and how we will calculate just I will give a basic idea. Don't I will not go into detail of that because it is not necessary for us. So we use concentration time graph. Okay, this is the plasma concentration, this is time, okay, and we generally took area under curve. So first what we will do? So first suppose we are giving the drug to oral route. Okay, so we will take area under curve. Okay, concentration time graph when the drug is given to oral loop and we compare it to IV when the drug is given to IV route we also calculate area under concentration then we compare those two so here biology is area under curve of concentration time graph given when given to oral loop upon when given to IV route clear and it is a fraction as you are seeing so it has no unit clear and it is also known it is also calculated which is we are calculating as a trapezoid rule now Coming to the next drug, okay. So this uh, part is not so important, okay. They are giving T max with uh, rate of absorption. This this is not so important, okay. Now we are moving to the next important term, that is bio equivalence. So it compares the bio bio ability of two brand of same medicine, okay. We are comparing the same medicine, but what uh, what is different? That is brand, okay. Two brand of same medicine. Now. The acceptable limit of bioequivalence is 80 to 125 percent. Okay, this is the acceptable limit. Uh, taking two, we will do, we will give two examples. Okay, first we will discuss about paracetamol, then we will discuss about phenytoin. So when we are going to discuss about paracetamol, suppose there are two forms, calpol and crocin. These are two brands of the same drug, that is paracetamol. Now, when we compare the bioequivalence of these two drugs, so these are within 80 percent to 125 percent limit. Clear. So, so these drugs, drugs are bioequivalent. So, so here the brand of these drugs can be exchanged. Okay. okay. If, if you prescribe certain patient crossing, he or she may take calpol, no problem. Because they these two brands have bioequivalence within 80 to 125 percent range. But when you prescribe a patient that is eptoin, then he or she cannot take dientin. Okay. Both are the same medicine, phenytoin, but the bioequivalence is different. Clear? Yeah. So, you must remember two examples phenytoin have bio coming under bioinquivalent, whereas paracetamol is bioinquivalent. Clear? Yeah. Now, so uh, I have written it produces adverse drug effect with 80 to 125 percent variation, never change branch, so these drugs are bioinquivalent. Clear? Yeah. Now, coming to the second, so we have discussed absorption. We have started with A, D, M, E. So, so we have discussed about absorption, now coming to the distribution. So how drug is distributed? Yeah. So, so suppose this is your drug, this processes the endothelium, this is the blood vessel, so processes the endothelium, then it goes to extravascular organ, okay, and then causes its effect, means and the drug for the particular organ, okay, that is known as effect, and uh, the drug acts on other, organ, or other organs, will be known as side effect. Yeah. So, so some drug will also remain in blood vessels, vessels and some drug crosses the membrane and so its effect. Clear? So, so some amount of drug remain in blood vessels also. Clear? So let's move to the next. So now discuss the volume of distribution. So uh, in previous case I have seen uh, shown you this is the volume of distribution. Okay. okay. How much drug is crossing the endothelium? Basically, how much drug is going to extravascular organ? That is VD. Volume of distribution. So, volume of distribution is directly proportional to extravascular deposition into organs. Okay. So, volume of distribution is basically giving you idea about how much drug is going to extravascular organs. Now, 
so the amount of and what is the definition of volume distribution so the amount of plasma needed to contain a drug in equal concentration remember this amount of plasma amount of plasma needed to contain a drug in equal concentration so this term is very important equal concentration okay amount of plasma needed to contain a drug in equal concentration is the basic definition of volume distribution and it is an apparent value why i am telling apparent value uh, when i will give example that concept will also be clear Uh, okay so suppose first uh, 70 kg man okay 4 liter plasma is there now take an example drug one and drug one 100% drug remains in blood vessels okay 100% drug is remaining in cell blood vessel it is not crossing the endothelium means not crossing the blood vessel so volume distribution of this drug is 4 liter because the full whole drug is present inside the plasma only plasma is there whole blood is inside the plasma okay so the drug is Supporting meaning only four liter of liquid. Okay, so volume distribution of that particular drug is four liter. Suppose fifty percent drug remains in blood vessel and fifty percent goes to organs. Okay, then fifty percent which is remaining in blood vessel means it is distributed in four liter. Now fifty percent which is going to organ. So if the extravascular space is also filled with plasma, four liter of it would be required for same distribution of drug means here fifty percent drug is there in four liter plasma. Then Here, in organs, also fifty percent drug is going. So there must be presence of four liter plasma to equalize the concentration. I am told you in equal concentration. Okay, getting. So the volume distribution is four liter, which is this plasma, and this four liter will be the extra vascular space. So volume distribution of this drug should be eight liter. Now, suppose drug three, twenty-five percent drug remaining in blood vessel, and seventy-five percent is going to organs. Means this twenty-five percent is present within four liter. So this 75% drug should be present within 2 liter. Okay, if this 75% drug will be present in 2 liter, then these two concentration will be equal. Okay, 25 upon 4 and here 75 upon 12. Clear? Okay. So here 2 liter should be there. Then volume distribution will be 4 liter plus 2 liter means 16 liter. Clear? Okay. So by these examples, you can easily get the idea of volume distribution. Okay, hence volume distribution basically determines extravascular spread of the drug. Clear? More the volume distribution, more extravascular deposition of the drug is occurred. So in the first point, I have discussed this volume distribution directly proportional to extravascular deposition into organs. Now, more the VD means less drug remains in blood vessels. Why is this? Okay, more VD means less drug in blood vessel. Less VD means more drug within more drug within the blood vessels. Clear? So this point was clear. Volume distribution more, it means extra vascular deposition more. It means intra vascular concentration is less. Now coming to the calculation, how calculate? So volume distribution is basically dose given, okay, upon plasma concentration. This is in mg and this is in mg per liter. You can easily take an example and derive this formula. Okay. It means volume distribution is inversely proportional to plasma concentration. Okay, means if plasma concentration is low, then volume distribution will be high. Okay, no problem here. Volume distribution maximum can go to infinite, lowest four liter in 70 kg patient. This is because plasma volume cannot be reduced. Okay, hence even if all drug remains in blood vessel, it will only and only there will be, because plasma is fixed four liter. Okay, so lowest value will be four liter. Now. What are the factors on which volume distribution depend? This is very 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 important point. Coming to that, so first is lipid solubility of drug. Okay, lipid solubility of drug is directly proportional to your volume of distribution. Get your point? Lipid solubility of drug will be directly proportional to volume distribution. More the lipid solubility of drug, more will be the volume distribution. Clear? Now the second plasma protein binding of a drug is inversely proportional to volume distribution. Means suppose this is a membrane. So more lipid solubility means easy, easy to cross membrane. So more volume distribution. But if this drug is binding to this plasma protein, then the size of the drug is increased. So it will will not it will be not easy to cross the particular barrier. Okay. So more the plasma protein binding, more the plasma protein binding, less will be the volume distribution. So these two points are very important. Okay. So drugs having both the properties. Okay. That is. Uh, Uh, lipid solubility of drug will be high. Plasma protein binding of a drug is low. Okay, so both will favor the drug crossing the membrane barrier. Clear? Now coming to the next, some other factors also there is okay. 
because old people have less plasma protein in compared to children. Gender men have more plasma protein in compared to women. In pregnancy plasma protein amount increases. Clear? So you can relate this point with the two basic points that is lipid solubility and plasma protein binding. In diseases such as nephrotic syndrome, cystic liver, CHF, dehydration, okay, the hormone distribution may get affected. Clear? Basic concept is same. Now coming to the plasma proteins. So there are two plasma proteins which we will discuss here: albumin and alpha one acid glycoprotein. The name itself suggesting albumin uh, alpha one acid glycoprotein means it will be acidic in nature. And albumin you are knowing basic in nature. So it will bind acidic drug. Basic protein bind acidic drug. Acidic protein bind basic drug. So what are the drug? So you can remember in numerics ab na work talo in Hindi ab na work talo. Yeah, ab in a work talo. So a for anti epilepsy drug, b for barbiturates, n for NSAID. Warfarin, then dolbutamide. Here, AB coil. AB coil. Okay, so A for antiarrhythmic, B for beta blocker, C for calcium channel blocker, then opioids, neutramine, lignocos. So these are the drugs which bind to alpha 1 acid glycoprotein and these are the drugs which bind to albumin. So two trick, Abnavortalo and AB coil. Now, some important clinical points. So, so plasma protein binding of a drug is non specific. Okay. okay, many drugs can bind at the same site. Okay, so if suppose this is the site, okay, A drug also bind to this site, B drug also bind to this site. So, so whose affinity is more, we will bind more, and, and whose affinity is less, we will bind less. Okay, okay. one more point the if, if drugs bind to this plasma protein, protein then it's what means its efficiency decreases because it is not available in free form. Because Free form of drug is basically active form. Okay. okay. So, so more, more the plasma protein binding, less will be the free form. So less will be the action. So less will be the toxicity chances. Remember this. Less will be the toxicity chances also. Okay. okay. So, so many drugs can bind to the same site. So displacement can occur. One example, very important example. Sulfonamides. Sulfonamide bind to aluminum. And it displaces bilirubin. Because bilirubin also bind to aluminum. Sulfonamide also bind to aluminum. But sulfonamide has more affinity. So sulfonamide displaces bilirubin. Okay, okay, from albumin binding sign. So, so there will be more free bilirubin there. Okay, okay. clear. Yeah. So, if, if there will be more free bilirubin, what will happen? In adults, bilirubin cannot cause brain. So, so there, there will be no such side effect, side effect there. But, but in units, because their blood way is not fully developed. So, this, this bilirubin enters into the brain and damages neurons. And that particular condition is known as carnitas. So, this is very, very important clinical point which is related to plant protein binding. So, sulfonamides are contraindicated in units. Remember this. This is very important, frequently asked MC question. Now, anti epilepsy drugs such as phenobarbitone, it displaces phenytoin. So, there will be toxicity of phenytoin. Aspirin displaces tall butamide. So, there will be more action of tall butamide on pancreas. So, there will be decreased insulin. There will be hypo increased insulin. So, there will be hypoglycemia. Clear? We will discuss these drugs in uh, when we will discuss in the plant. Now, now, what are the clinical importance of volume distribution? So, the first is the hemodialysis. Remember this. Hemodialysis. Because hemodialysis, uh, why we are discussing? Uh, we discuss this point when we drug poisoning. Okay. Last option in case of drug poisoning is hemodialysis. Now, there are two conditions where there is no role of hemodialysis. If a drug has high volume distribution or if a drug has low volume distribution but high plasma protein binding. So, there will be no role of hemodialysis for those drugs. Okay. High volume distribution means Mm, drug which is remaining inside the vessels is very less in amount. So, there will be no effect of hemodialysis. If high plasma protein binding is there, then the drug cannot cause the same perineal membrane of dialyzer, the machine dialyzer, and uh, that is basically same perineal membrane, that is made up of same perineal membrane. And drug, because of binding to the protein, suppose this is the protein, this is the drug, size increases, so it will not cause the same perineal membrane. So, these are the two conditions where hemodialysis is of no use. Remember this. So, we do hemolysis for drugs with, with low volume distribution and free form. Clear? So, uh, rheumatic blast where hemodialysis can be performed, barbiturates, lithium, aspirin, alcohol, salicylate, theophylline, and where there is no role of hemodialysis, avoid ABC. Amphetamine, verapamine, organophosphate, ingramine, digoxin, amadarone, benzodiazepines, and chloroquine. Clear? Now, the next important point that high volume of distribution drugs are longer acting. Okay, T half means T half directly proportional to volume of distribution. Okay, they have a high loading dose. Yeah. We will discuss about loading dose in several videos. So, this is our discussion on the second part, okay, distribution of the drug. Okay, so thank you for watching. If uh, please 
If you have not subscribed my channel, please subscribe and support. Thank you. Thanks a lot for watching.